So good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's research workshop. Um, thank you all for attending this session and for those who are watching this online. My name is Paul Nicolaitis, the Education Director for the RMIT LSS, and I would like to begin this workshop by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Sovereignty has never been seceded and will always be Aboriginal land. So tonight we are joined by Anastasia Stepanovic. Anastasia has been a legal researcher for eight years and has been the president of the Australian Law Librarians Association and is now currently the Law Librarian for the University of Melbourne. So Anastasia is genuinely passionate about legal research and thoroughly enjoys teaching and educating others on how to best execute legal research. So in this workshop, Anastasia will highlight tips and tricks on how to conduct legal research um, that are very relevant to your studies. Now, before we start this exciting and very beneficial workshop, I would like to provide some housekeeping rules. You are more than welcome to keep your camera on throughout the event. However, I would like to add that you do not put on your microphone outside of asking questions to Anastasia during the Q&A session. Um, and also these sessions will be recorded for future use and reference to for students. So if you do not wish to be seen during the recordings, switch off your camera. Um, if there are any issues or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me um, either by messaging the chat or by emailing me on education at RMIT LSS. Um, so that's about it. So Anastasia, whenever you're ready, um, take it away. Thank you so much, Paul. And thank you everyone for joining uh, live tonight and uh, in future, looking back at this. This, uh, as Paul had mentioned, it, I'm very passionate about it and I probably will go very fast at some points. So if you do get stuck at all, please feel free to put things into the chat. Um, I'm sure uh, Paul and Jess will then notify me that uh, I need to go a bit slower or I need to go and show something again. Uh, I understand that legal research can be quite overwhelming. Um, so don't stress, I will make notes for you to then pass on to everyone after this session. And uh, hopefully it can be a bit of a trigger for you when you're doing your research again. So I do have a bit of a, um, a plan to go through tonight. So uh, to start off with, we are on our library subject guides page, which has been put together by your amazing library staff at RMIT. Um, and it's just going, I'm just going to highlight to you the main databases to be using and uh, how to get the best out of them. Because a lot of them can be a bit scary and clunky and you're not quite sure what to use them for. Uh, so to begin, um, we've got a, a query, say, for example, you're doing a bit of research on statutory qualified privilege and information. So first things first, what is statutory qualified privilege? And this is something you really do need to find out. This then helps take us into how to find legislation, how to find cases, and then other sources that will really help us. So like your journal articles, your academic articles. This is how we all put it all together and uh, try and make sense of everything that's come up. So starting in Lexis, uh, Lexis Advanced Pacific. So this is where I'm going to find my, actually I should have right clicked that and opened it in a separate window. This is a good, this is good practice guys. Always right click and open in a new tab. It just makes your research uh, flow and I'll show you in a minute why. So Starting with Lexis Advance, we want to find the definition of stat, uh, statutory qualified privilege. So I make sure that I jump through this one. So by jumping this way, we're making sure we're connecting with our RMIT login. If we don't, we'll, we'll be stumped and have no access to anything. All righty, so as I mentioned, we want to find the definition. So we look to the publications tile on Lexis Advance and we come to the option called Encyclopedic Legal Dictionary. This is the Australian Legal Dictionary. This is very different to a Macquarie Dictionary. Macquarie Dictionary would just be your generic understanding of the terminology, whereas we all know in legal land, it's interpreted so much differently. So we want to make sure that we're coming to a legal dictionary. 
within my terms box, I start typing statutory qualified privilege. Oh my goodness. My, my, I, I don't have my glasses on, I apologize. Let's go back here, privilege. So statutory qualified privilege comes up under the Australian Legal Dictionary and I can see it's just sitting there for me. There are other results that have come up, but that's to directing me back to statutory qualified privilege. So I just wanna open up this one result here. So I can see here, it's a statutory variant and defense of qualified privilege. And it's taking me to an example of the Defamation Act 2005, section number 30. Now, funny thing is with the New South Wales Act of the Defamation Act, it is also the same as the Victorian Act. And this is the one I'm going to stick with for this evening. So we're going to pretend for argument's sake that this says Victoria. And if you do want to know how we can look at that, uh, definitely when we start looking at the legislation, so how I know that both New South Wales and Victoria have the same section. So now that we know our statutory qualified pri privilege, we've got our understanding, it is within defamation, so it matches the query, it matches our research. We're looking for statutory qualified privilege in defamation law. So this is all connecting already. And to start off with, we've got our legislation. Cool. Pretty cool. What we then need to do is we need to locate our legislation. We want to make sure that this is still current law. Okay, we don't want to be using and referring to something that's maybe repealed or expired. So we need to make sure that it's still current. Back to our key resources area, we have our legislation tab. Definitely you can start searching in there. Uh, you can also, I think you should have the link sitting out here. There we go. Should be here. Nope, I'll just click on the legislation tab. So by clicking on legislation, we want to find the Victorian Act of the Defamation Act 2005. So by selecting Victoria, we're taken to this website. This is the legislation.vic.gov.au website. This is you, you should not go anywhere. Do not Google, do not Osley, do not anything else. Let, don't legify. I want you all getting used to going to the authorised government websites for your act. It is so highly important. If, for example, we went into Osley or we looked at Google, they provide results that of the act that was most clicked on. So it could be a version from, say, I don't know, 2008. And because that version of the Defamation Act was so popular, Google's put that to the top. And all of a sudden you're relying on legislation that's over 10 years old. And we don't want that. So for argument's sake, you always come to these platforms here. So we search for defamation. 2005, I could either wait for a drop down to come or I will select enter. So my first link here is the Defamation Act 2005. I can see here it is still in force. So we've got this nice blue area saying we're good to go. This current version is at version number five. And should I need to look at something that was from back in 2008 or 2007, I have the option to look at these links here on my left-hand side. So if I do need to go back in time, I have the opportunity here. Now, if I did a Google search or an Osley search, I cannot do this. So if your research is saying, well, what did statutory qualified privilege say in the beginning? What did it say when this act was first enacted? Has it changed in any way? To find out if it's changed in any way, we always open up our authorized version link. So we've got our PDF authorized version link just here. We open up that hyperlink And we go, does that work? We'll go to section 30, so I'll just scroll down. Come on. 
There we go. All right, section 30. Now, if it had changed, so from section subsection 1A, B, we'll see some bolded notes. It hasn't changed there, but I can see here section 30, subsection 3 has changed. So I'm going to keep that in mind just in case my research requires me to look at this. So if I do need to, I can go to a previous version back in 2014 to see what the actual section said before the changes. This is why it's important to go to these uh, authorised websites so we're not missing any important content, okay? Right, now that we know that the Act is in force, our section still applies, we're pretty much good to go. Let's get down to finding a little bit more content behind section 30 of the Defamation Act 2005. So I'm going to go back to the guide on my T website. Alrighty, now we've already got Lexis open, which is great. That's one of the platforms we definitely need to do a legislative note up. The next platform we need is Osley. So I'm gonna right click and open that in another link. And we also need Westlaw. And then finally, we need Jade. So I'm going to open up Jade. Jade is uh, a freely available website. You can subscribe to this uh, with your university email. You can actually get a full subscription access to this as a student for free. Uh, so make sure you, you do register. Jade is very beneficial and you'll see We'll see why. So now that I've got my links open, I'm going to make sure I connect to these platforms just so that I can get in with my RMIT login. I can close off, I can put my definition ahead here. All right. All right, now that we've got our platforms open and ready to go, West, it looks like Westlaw is still loading, we're going to pop in our legislative note up. So on Osley, in the red banner, there's a link called Law Site. We click on that. And this is a form that sits over the top of Osley that makes it easier for us to look for information. Defamation Act 2005, Section 30 search. What this does is it says, okay, I found 219 cases on section 30 under the Defamation Act 2005. Now here's the trick. We noticed in the, de in the definitions of statutory qualified privilege, it was taking us to the New South Wales uh, section of section 30 of the Defamation Act. I can see here too that there are, uh, there was a WA reference. So we want to make sure we're looking at Victoria. We're not, we're not quite too worried about the rest of the jurisdictions at the minute. We're worried about Victoria. So to organise this, we select jurisdiction in this grey banner here. By selecting the title jurisdiction, I rejig all my information and it goes in jurisdictional order. So I can see all my Commonwealth, all my New South Wales. And as I scroll down, not Queensland, Victoria. So here are all my Victorian cases. Only thing is, I can't extract that now in Osley. I just sort of have to, have to work with this table. Now, as I scroll further down, so I can see my cases. I can actually see that there are three matching law reform documents and also uh, 10 law journal articles too to help boost more understanding behind Section 30. What a great start. This is, this is great. This, we've got a lot of content already. We're not going to go astray. We've got things to help get us there, boosted, have a bit of a read through. We might want to look at these journal articles before we start digging into the cases. A lot of the time when you do a case research, and we'll look at that soon, uh, it, you can get bogged down. You can think, oh, is that the right case? I've looked at that. I'm not quite sure. These journal articles actually help define for you. Well, you know, out of all the cases that came up from Victoria, these are probably the main ones we would look at. These, these really apply Section 30. So rather than going through 200 cases, it's probably better to go through 
the 10 more journal articles that come up here. Having done that, I'm going to see, oh, that's fine. I'm going to open up my Westlaw. Now Westlaw is a little bit different. It doesn't have a, a nice quick form for me to use, but it is still really useful. Come on. So from here, I'm going to do as I had done with the law site form only. I'm going to make sure I pop in my double quotation marks and look for Defamation Act 2005. And then I'm going to do space 30. Now, as I can see here, I've got a drop down of lists available to me of jurisdictions. Which one am I looking for? So I can't see Victoria, but I'll select more. And I can see here, boom, there's my Victorian one. Notice here how our section 30 mimics that of Queensland, Tasmania, New South Wales, and WA. Notice that. So section 30 is actually quite generic. But we are looking at Victoria, so we won't worry about the rest of the, the jurisdictions. It's just important to note that other other places within the nation are also referring to the same type of speech in a way. So it can help with your research. So we'll select the link section 30 for Victoria. I just waited for a drop down in Westlaw. I didn't hit enter. I made sure I was looking at all the information before I really did a big jump. Research is all about patience, guys. All about patience. So now that our results have loaded, we can see here, okay, right, this is the section, it, it mimics the same to what I had found on the Victorian uh, government website. So we're, we're, we're going good here, this is looking okay. But I can see across the top here, I've got a citing references tab. This is definitely what I want to be clicking on by doing a note up of my section. And because it's been so tailored, unlike the, the law site list, which took me to all the OSLI results, it's actually giving me results from Victoria only. So I've only got 25 cases to go through. Less overwhelming, so much more. I really want to delve into this now. I want to understand that more. By selecting secondary sources, this is where I'm going to get a bit more journal articles, a little bit more content, some textbook commentary, some annotated commentary. I'm going to get real depth into section 30 here. How did it become this big? Why is it used? Part of all your legal research is being curious. It's wanting to dig for that information. Why are we looking at statutory qualified privilege within defamation? How is it applied these days? How is it important to what I'm doing? How am I going to try and put this into context in my essay? These resources and these tricks I'm showing you are going to really help you get that deeper understanding. Sure, you can read the section, but it, it makes more sense when you put it all together this way. So I can see here, all right, that's come from the not-for-profit best, best practice manual. Might not be the right information to be looking at because that's talking about charities. But as we go down the list, we can see here, okay, well, this is coming from the Laws of Australia, which is like Halsbury's Laws of Australia. For anyone that don't, doesn't know about them, that's your encyclopedia. It's like wiki for legal language. Wikipedia for legal, for law, Laws of Australia and Halsbury's. Note them down. They're your wikis. Don't ever go to Google and do a Wikipedia search on these topics. You want to be going to the Laws of Australia and Halsbury's Laws of Australia. As we scroll further down the list, I can see here more laws of Australia is coming up. And then I have this journal article, Australian Law Journal. Pretty cool. And it's also not in my Ostley or site list. Boom. I've got more information. It might seem overwhelming, but this all connects and it all makes sense. So. Now that I've done my Westlaw search, I'm feeling good. I'm like, yes, getting a bit more depth into section 30 here. I'm going to come into Lexis. 
log back into this platform. And on my home page, remember we went to publications, that publications tile first. We're now actually going to go into this light green box called Quick Find. I'm going to select my legislation tab because we are looking for the Defamation Act. And I'm going to make sure I'm looking for Defamation Act 2005. So I select that drop down and we're looking at provision number 30. So I select search. Now keep in mind Westlaw, we realize that there are a couple of jurisdictions that talk about the same section 30. So it's no, no surprise here, we've got six results. We actually need to make sure we're selecting the Victorian link. So we can notice that on your right-hand side here, you can see your uh, legislation Queensland, legislation New South Wales, legislation SA, WA, and there's B. That's my last result. Select the hyperlink. All right, so again, this takes me to what the section says within the Act. Uh, I actually do not trust Lexis at all with what it has uh, written about the actual Act. I'm more um, cautious within Lexis. Reason being, it's the last platform to be updated with any legislative changes. So just be careful. So if you really do want to make sure the section says the right thing, the government website. All right. But what I do trust on this platform is the view legislation citator, fast forward button next to my section. So I select this hyperlink. And what it does is similar to Westlaw, it puts all together all my cases, journals, newsletters, and bulletins on my section 30. So I can see here there's about 23 cases that were captured. Westlaw said about 25. Close, not bad. Uh, we've got my secondary materials here, which are then going to help define heavily for me section 30. These three platforms I've just shown, Osley, Westlaw and Lexis, will not explain section 30 altogether the same way. So they will not go, well, we've needed this because this and this is how we've interpreted it. There are different editors per database. Everyone's got a different way of talking about something. And it's a whole way of the world at the minute. Everyone's got their own way of interpreting things, putting things, these cases came together and did this and said that. This is why it's important to go through all the databases because one database is going to say X, Y, and Z, and the other one's going to say A, B, C. You need to be careful. You need to be thorough. And as a lawyer, this is your decision to make at the end of the day. You can't make that decision alone on one database. You need to be searching across as much material as you can get your hands on. So looking at these secondary materials, I did say before, Paulsbury's Laws of Australia and Laws of Australia, they're your Wikipedia for law. These publications, no matter where you are, no matter where you go after university, they will any place will either have Paul's Resource of Australia or Laws of Australia, set in stone. They're your Wikipedia. We don't want Wikipedia. We've already got a bit of explanation from Laws of Australia at the minute. I'm just going to look at further commentary here. I can see, okay, there's, there's an actual textbook called the Australian Law, uh, Defamation Law and Practice. Boom. But we don't have links to it. Doesn't mean that the university does not have this in a different publication or in hard copy somewhere. So don't stress, if there's no hyperlinks here. You go back to the library catalog, copy in the bolded text and search for it in the library catalog, okay? So if there's no hyperlink, it does not mean it does not exist. You can get it. Being students, you have access to everything. <laughs> so from here, I've got my commentary. I can see here, all right, well, I've got court forms and precedents and pleadings in Australia. It talks about the section. So that's a nice addition. But then notice there's no journal articles, newsletters or bulletins. So say for example, a lot of you may love Lexis Advance. It's fine, I get it. Lexis Advance is pretty cool. It, it does hit the nail on the head a lot of the time. But if you only stayed here and only looked here, you'd have no academic journal articles at all or legal journal articles. So just be careful. 
And then we scroll down and we can see all our cases. The final place for note up is Jade. I love Jade. Like I said, please register. Just select the yellow button and say sign up. <laughs> um, pop in your uh, university email address and you'll get like complete access. It's, it's incredible. So because I know my section and I know my act, I can manipulate this database without going too many clicks around. This is a trick that not a lot of people know. And anytime someone's seen, shown this or anytime someone learns this, they go, life saved. Are you ready? Letter S, number 30. Defamation Act. So I just start typing in what I need. Wait for the drop down. I'm not being too hasty. I can see here, hmm, I'm still not getting what I want. So I be specific and I say it's Victoria. All of a sudden, I have this drop down called Section 30 Show Citations. This, you are all going to just wow all your lecturers and all your peers because you'll be like, I can search Jade in a second. By selecting Show Citations, I'm taken to a list of cases that are brought up within Jade. Now, if you remember on Westlaw, we had 25 results, Lexus about 23. On Jade, we have 35 cases. There's an extra 10 on here that were picked up by the other two databases. The number 147 indicates to me that section 30 has been mentioned 147 times from what Jade can see. They're only saying, okay, yep, section 30, 147 times in 35 cases. That's how we read what this says. So don't ever put it in your research document that was 147 cases, that's a lie. <laughs> Always go by the second number for the amount of documents that have come up. And then to scroll through this content and understand what it's saying, we can actually see Jada's giving us that understanding background to what the cases and how the cases have implemented Section 30. The other databases weren't doing that. The, the other databases were just giving me a list of cases. Whereas this, Jade's actually saying to me, well, this latest one from the 5th of August has really, really discussed Section 30, like really put this into play. This one from the 21st of June, yeah, mentions it. But as you scroll through, you can actually see a better understanding of why these cases were bringing it up and maybe which ones you want to be leading with. This takes me nicely into the next segment of cases. Before I move on, is there anything that anyone would like me to address before I start talking about case law? Any questions? Uh, I have one. Cool. Thanks, Gabriella. Uh, if you were just searching a term, not yep. a uh, section of legislation, would you just do exactly the same thing? Like if you were just searching statute, statutory qualified privilege, you'd just do it exactly the same way? No, do it differently. And I'll get to that after I do case law searching. Okay. Cool. Thanks for bringing it up, though. It's very important. Yeah, very important. Uh, all right. So without further ado, let's go into, I'm going to look at our Westlaw results here. The reason I want to look at my Westlaw results is because Westlaw, I find Westlaw captures enough cases and they really have a bit more thorough editors compared to Lexis. In saying that, they are very competitive and they're very much on par. So I want you to make sure that you do look at the results side by side. Yes, Jade gave us so many cases and we can delve into that more. There's probably a case on there that you really want to run with, but Lexis and Westlaw are quite selective. They'll say, well, this actually matches up with a lot of commentary we talk about, or it's actually spoken about with another judge who's published a book with us. And it actually can tie in in a different way. So Westlaw and Lexis are quite selective. Their editors and their background content people are selective with what amount of cases they'll pick up. That's why Jade has 35. Jade and Osley will pick up all the cases. They're not subjective. 
they'll pick up everything. Whereas Westlaw and Lexus can be quite, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna take this match because it actually means something. There's a bit more depth here. So they'll go through the Jade list of content that I just showed you. You, you can see how section 30 was implemented and they'll go, yeah, that case really spoke about it. It was really in depth. It's going to help match up with all this other content we have too. So they're very, they, they spend much more time curating the information so that they sort of do a little bit more work for you. So this list on Westlaw, I can see here, there's this case, Wilson v Europe Media. Now, a lot of you may know Rebel Wilson. She's quite, you know, awesome for Australia. <laughs> she went through apparent defamation issue and it was all on statutory qualified privilege, which is quite cool. So to begin with, I'm going to look at this case because part of my research, it looks like it's going to hit the nail on the head. She's really going to give me a little bit of boost. All right. So Wilson v. Bureau Media. How to read what this is. On the Westlaw platform, this page is called a key site page. So on Lexus, you've got case base. With Westlaw, it's called key site. On here, I can see, all right, there's a red flag. It's been treated negatively. And it tells me why it's been reversed in a Victorian County Court of Appeal case. So I can already see here, all right, I've got to be careful with what I look at here. As I scroll down, there's some key content here. So I can see there's qualified privileged in general. And then there's my terms will come up in here. believe it'll be within this key. So my qualified privilege will be within this key. If I want to delve more into the topic of qualified privilege, I can click on this hyperlink. And Westlaw will curate and collect as much as all that they can that they've indexed on qualified privilege here. So that's really helpful. As I scroll down the list, I can see, all right, we're coming into my party names, the legal representation, and then a little bit of a head note little bit of content. So these terms with their dashes are called catchwords. Catchwords are huge. Catchwords are hashtags of a case. So say you're looking on Twitter or Instagram, you look for something quite specific like Adidas shoes, you use hashtag Adidas shoes. Same applies for cases. Catchwords are hashtags. This is what these are. And they begin before the whole judgment starts. Catchwords are very, very important. And I'll show you how they work in an advanced search, okay? So at the minute, we're just going to do a bit of a case, looking at cases and how they vary over the different platforms, and then we'll do a good search on just the terms, statutory qualified privilege, for example, okay? So I can read the judgment at any time I like. What I want to know is my citing references. I want to see what else has been spoken about on this Wilson v. Media case. My secondary sources will take me to other journal articles that actually talk about my, this Wilson case. This is going to give me a better description. I could spend hours looking through the judgment, but I recommend you look at the uh, secondary materials that come up on this case. It's just going to explain it to you in a little bit more, less legal jargon, if you will. And it puts together nicely talking on Section 30 of the Defamation Act and how this case applied it, how it was so current to what's going on. Brings up information on social media. It brings up online defamation. These are new and emerging issues happening in the world at the minute and they're not, they're not captured as much as they were, that, that they should have been back when the internet really started because it wasn't a thing. Whereas now it's a real big thing and it's emerging. So this is current. This has now added a whole new meaning to my research. My research has gone from stat, like it's talking about statutory qualified privilege. But now we're bringing in to terms, not just defamation law, we're now looking at online defamation law. And that can give you that leading edge by looking at these journal articles because it's, it, it really goes into depth for you on that section 30. And it 
that says, okay, Wilson, uh, Rebel Wilson actually brought up a lot of interesting talk about why statutory qualified privilege is the way it is and how it's uh, being misconstrued and being put online. And not a lot of people are talking about it. And it is now becoming such a big thing. We can see that it's becoming a big thing by looking at all the other platforms along with Westlaw. So along with my secondary sources that give me my journal articles and a bit of commentary to explain the case a bit more, I can also see that there are 28 cases since 2017 that have actually cited my Rebel Wilson case. That's, that's quite big. A lot of cases from 2017 wouldn't have this much traction. You would think, oh, probably something from 2007 would have enough traction like this. This is big. This is good. Even though it's a negative case to look at, it's, it's treated negatively because it's been reversed, we can actually still utilise this information. On the law site page, I also want to see how Osley has put together the content on my Rebel Wilson case. So from Westlaw, I take the medium neutral citation. This is my unique number. This is my unique identifier to this case. Sure, I could search uh, Wilson v Bureau Media on any platform, but I'll get uh, so many results that are just not useful. What I need is my medium neutral citation. So I'm going to copy that. So I'll just write, oops. Copy. And paste it in. Searching for this, I can see that there's a much longer list than 28 cases referring to my Rebel Wilson case. So that's that's quite, that's really awesome. And I've got more Law Journal articles talking on this. Matching section 30 with current issues going on, I can actually be quite specific now. So this case I've picked is really hitting the nail on the head. This is really going to give my research the leading edge I need to make the point I want to get across. Now these journal articles will differ to the ones you've found for section 30. So they will now go, okay, we are still talking about section 30, but now we're talking about how it's been applied. And because Rebel Wilson's spoken about it and has used it and it's come and brought new things to light, this is now what we're going to discuss. So it gets a little bit more in depth for you there. What I want to do is I want to compare this to the results that come up on Lexis as well. So I go back to the Lexis homepage. And in that same quick find bar, my quick find bar here, I have a case citation option. By pasting in the citation that I had, again, because I don't want to search for Wilson v Bureau Media, it's going to bring up too many results. I'm tailored. This is my case. This is my everything. It puts together the section. It puts together what I want to say. It's been applied. I hit search and it takes me to my case base content. We all like case space. Case space is cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing to look at, case space. So I select the, the one result that's come up, select the hyperlink there. And I can see here what comes up is quite similar to what had come up on Westlaw, which is nice. You can see a little bit of consistency, uh, but it is explained a bit differently as well. So I can see here, qualified privilege is spoken about. I assure you statutory qualified privilege is spoken about in this case. It's just a matter of delving into it and reading through it. So as we go through, we can see, all right, there's our catchwords. Again, our hashtags to the case. My litigation history. So how did Wilson, you know, Rebel Wilson's case, how did it go through all the courts? It just, you can see it was all related. Got from, you know, one to six, and then it was reversed in this, uh, court of Appeal case, so we can read that if we wanted to. Um, 
and then cases referring to this case. We can see here how, how it's all come together. And then as I scroll down, there'll be further, there'll be journal articles on this as well. Oh, Lord. Oh, there we go. Publications referring to this. Again, there is no hyperlink to this result. So if you did want to read this article, you would pop in to uh, the library catalog and look up the privacy law bulletin. So if I just hover over it, it lets me know the full abbreviation, the unabbreviated terminology. So that helps you when you aren't looking for the, the article. So these two are different to what's come up in Westlaw and again in LawSite. And then finally, Jade. Jade's litigation history is so incredible, especially if you want to say, uh, to show, oh yeah, this is my understanding of the Wilson case. It, it started back early 2017. It went through to uh, 2018 and it's sort of, this is my understanding of it. So we simply pop in DSD, factor one. Wait for the drop down. Don't be too hasty. It's so easy to be hasty when doing research. Open up the document in Jade. Perfect. The first thing I see here, this decision, this, this decision is under appeal. It's done. So if you had started in Jade, you're getting a good indication. Oh, it's been appealed. I have to, I have to look at that. Why? What had happened? It's a very short case. It's very quick. You'd be, it's beneficial reading that. But what's being applied in this case is more important than what's being said in the Victorian Supreme Court of Appeal case. So I can see here, I've got a few paragraphs that have been already mentioned. Um, since this case and judgment was handed down, I can see here, oh, quite popular. Let's take a look at all the cases that were mentioned. I select the citation report in this green ribbon here. What it does is it takes me all the way down to the bottom of Jade and says, all right, here's your litigation history. This little diamond indicates to me where I am in the litigation history segment. So I can see here, oh, I'm, I'm kind of halfway. But there were further cases that came up after that. All the other platforms don't really show this nice tableized format of your litigation history. It can be quite messy, whereas this is nicely done for you by date. So it all makes sense. And then I can see my cases citing this decision. I can actually jump through these hyperlinks here and actually see, okay, this 2021, this most recent 2021 decision was, is the top leading one that has cited my Wilson case the most. Utilising these platforms altogether can really help you understand all the content you have. If you had just started in Osley for this case, you'd feel like a minefield. You'd probably just want to go to the journal articles and not worry about all the cases that came up. When you do Osley and Jade side by side, you can actually get a better understanding of maybe which case is uh, hitting our topic a little bit more. Which one's really being applying it? Which one has really gone, oh, yeah, we're, we're looking at it quite in depth here. I know this is very overwhelming, but searching over all these platforms, it truly does make sense. And it actually puts everything into perspective for you. You don't want to be searching blindly and going, I have 13,000 results. How do I get through 13,000 results? These little tricks I've just showed you, how to do a legislative note up, do a case note up. They really help get you that groundwork. You've got your groundwork done. So now that when, if you were to do just a general search on our term statutory qualified privilege, you would have a deeper understanding as to what you're looking for. Is there any questions about case law before I start just doing a general search on my search terms? All right, silence, I'll take it. I have a question. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, how do you uh, know what would be a, the leading case for a, um, a rule? That's a very good question. 
it's it comes down to doing that legislative note up that we did, okay, to find that content, that information. So we saw that Osley had over 200 results of cases. Osley and Jade, starting in them, great groundwork, but then Westlaw and Lexus grab a little bit more depth for you and describe it and go, okay, well, we found out of the 200 cases, there are 25 that matter. From that 25 we found on Westlaw or Lexis, they're the ones you'll go through. Lexis and Westlaw will list them by relevance for that section, okay? Whereas Osley and Jade put them by date. They don't go relevance, they go by date. The benefit of Westlaw and Lexis is they've gone right by relevance and usually within your top five results, they should marry up. So my Rebel Wilson case for Section 30 came up on both Westlaw and Lexis and was within both the five top results, top five results. Also, by searching for uh, my terms, so I could come into uh, Lexis, Osley and uh, Westlaw and pop in Statutory Qualified Privilege, Defamation Act, Section 30, and, uh, um, oh my goodness, lost my train of thought. Yeah, Statutory Qualified Privilege, Defamation, and um, my Section 30 of the Defamation Act 2005. That'll help me be really tailored too. But these note-ups, these ones that I've showed you, will help identify the leading ones, but you have to read them at the same time too. This is why it's good to show the different platforms, to show the journal articles that relate to the section. They will also identify to you, well, you know, section 30 back in 2005, the most leading case was blah. Now the most leading case is this. Does that help? It does. Just the last thing you said, where, where did you say it would say this is the, the most leading case? Cool. Um, it's just the, the, reason, the reason I'm asking is because we, this came up in our contracts um, lecture and I asked the question in that and there wasn't, it, we were told we should learn that elsewhere. And, um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like a, it's the, I understand that what you're saying, you know, that because of all the, what you're doing here, the filtering down, you know, the, it'll prioritise the top five, rah, 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 but how, he was saying there will be one. How do we know the one? Hmm. It's, it's hard because you could, you could just search. When we did the note up, remember how we had the laws of Australia and Hallsbury's laws of Australia come up? Mm -hmm. They are Wikipedia for legal. Yep. So if you open that up, it'll explain statutory qualified privilege and section 30, and it will actually give you um, a list of cases. It will yep, mention yep. the, probably the most prominent one can be mentioned multiple times and you'll pick it up as you're reading that content. Yep. So from that background information, usually if you're not quite sure to say, it's, we're talking about the Defamation Act. I know that there's a big leading text called the Australian Defamation Law. That is the leading text on defamation. I would look at that before I would look at the encyclopedias, which are your wikis, so your Horsbury's Laws of Australia, all laws of Australia. So I know I would look at that. But if I didn't know, I would go straight to Laws of Australia or Horsbury's Laws of Australia and read what they have to say. My encyclopedias will actually tell me and lead me to the correct content that I'm looking for. Now, I picked the Rebel Wilson case because it was just as an example for tonight. It might not be the right leading case, but this is an example I would have chosen as making an, an executive decision to go, okay, out of all these cases that have come up, Rebel Wilson actually talks about what I want to describe. So you being the lawyer, as much as the encyclopedias may spit out the information or the um, Australian defamation law and practice may spit out some information too, you need to demonstrate that ability and that curiosity to go, you know what, I trust this decision and I'm picking this case 
or I'm picking these two cases and I'm going to run with it with this section because I've looked at what's come up across all these platforms and I can see that these two cases are mentioned quite often or this one case is mentioned quite often. Yeah, th thank you. Sorry, I don't mean to, uh, to hijack. And it, it makes perfect no. sense that when you're in, in the real world, it, it'll come down to, you know, what, you know, your own um, thoughts on, on the cases. But it was just very, uh, he was very adamant there'll be one. And mm. if, if we're relying on it, there is one, and I choose something that I think fits it, but it isn't the one that he thinks it should be, like, yeah, I'm worried about that. No, I would. I, ask, I see where you're coming from, mm. but um, don't be too worried about it because it's, okay. it's all about that experience and showing um, that you've you've actually done the digging for it, for the information. Yep. So you may not have picked the one he's chosen or <laughs> yeah. the any lecturer's <laughs> chosen, but that's yeah. the same for any academic. Any lecturer can go, I've picked this case and I've picked yeah. this section and this is how I'm running with it. Yeah. Okay. So it is subjective, yeah. really. Okay. It is so subjective, yeah. and it is. I love that you've asked this question because even um, where I'm working now, it's train. You've got to start training yourself and believing in your own gut instinct. Mm, mm. Believe in that killer instinct you've got within yourself because what you have read, and as long as you're using all materials you've got within your scope and your reach, you can actually make a better qualified decision. And being in, in the university, you have so much at your fingertips. I kid you not. I've worked in the corporate industry and we have maybe not even a quarter of what you guys have access to. So knowing how to search these while you can is so beneficial. And going, you know what, I might not have LexisNexis with me right now, but I can go to the courts or I can go to the Law Institute of Victoria and do my searching there on extra content or you know what I've got enough information on Ostley to grab some journal articles and then I can match it with Jade because they're my free resources no, thank you thank you very much thanks no, that's okay like I said I can talk about this underwater so <laughs> and I'm quite passionate and want you guys to succeed as best you can don't be afraid to make a final judgment call don't be afraid to go you know what this works. If you're going to stick to something, make sure you've got the proof. And this is how you're going to get the proof by going through these databases, putting it together, and just going, yeah, okay. And if it's wrong, so be it. But you put, you implemented it, and you've made it convincing to them to be like, maybe the lecturer is feeling like, oh, maybe I got that wrong. That's a good yeah. thing. It's a yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you for that question. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just search across the whole, whole board of my databases and see what comes up with the terms I've selected. Now let's get onto Oslo properly. All right. So I've reset all my databases. So no longer doing a legislative note up. I've got my content. I found my journal articles. I know exactly where I'm going with this information. What I wouldn't mind now is going a bit broader. I wouldn't mind now going, okay, well, what else has spoken about my specific terms? I found specific other terms that weren't mentioned in my question, in the question for the essay. So the question for the essay is statutory qualified privilege and defamation law. How is it applied today? And by reading the content I've already found from the definition, from my legislative note, note up and from the work River Wilson case, I can confidently go, all right, I know what I'm looking for now. I wouldn't mind searching what else is out there if I don't focus on a particular case and particular legislation. So I make sure I use my quotation marks for the statutory qualified privilege. I want this term, I want this phrase to come up altogether. If I didn't search for it this way and I just search for statutory qualified privilege on its own, so I'll just do that first. Say I'm searching Osley, this is what I want to search. 20,000 results. No, thank you. 
I am now going to pop in statutory qualified privileged into its quotation marks. So I want it searched all together. Do not separate them. Osley spits out for me 336 case um, documents. So much better. This is so good. But something's still missing. I still need to find some defamation. I want it to be defamation content. So I'm going to pop after the end of my quotation, I'm going to say defamation. One document. It's quite narrow. Quite narrow. If I now have a bit of a play around with this, I'm actually telling the system, find me statutory qualified privilege within 50 words, either side of each other with defamation. Funny how if I didn't put in the word near, I'm stuck with one result. But by putting in the word near, I'm telling Osley, don't just give me something that you just find once off and I'm just going to go on my merry way and miss out on extra content. Actually find me content on statutory qualified privilege within 50 words of each other of defamation, either side. Now that I've got 190 documents to deal with, so much better than 20,000, so much better than 300, I'm going to select by database because these results are still too overwhelming for me. By selecting by database, I'm given a list of where I would like to search within. I don't really need to search too much of the court cases. I've, so I've seen them before. I wouldn't mind searching a little bit more journal articles. Now on Osley, we are limited to just journal articles, which is fine, but these will help give us a, bit, a little bit more different understanding behind our terms. So I can see here, okay, yep, there's the Federal Law Review. What have they said? Communications Law Bulletin. We saw that come up on Westlaw and Lexis. Notice how I've already said that. I've already made that judgment call. Why? Because the results I saw and that I've read already on my section note up and my case took me to journal articles that actually came from this journal. So I'm already starting to go, oh, oh, I'm picking up terms I saw before. Look, there's a media law workstation journal. How good is that? I can actually look at these results. They didn't come up before. I'm starting to make, I'm starting to see a pattern. I'm like, okay, it's talking about media. The case was talking about communications as well. I'm looking at social media too. So I might want to put, come back up to my search terms. And I might want to actually say near social media. Spell social properly. Yeah. Social media. No, didn't work. That's all right. I might just get rid of social and pop in media. Yeah. These type of searches that we're doing, it's give and take. The way we're doing this type of legal research now requires so much more patience. You've got to think of how you want your terms to be seen. So notice how I searched initially for uh, certain near social media and it brought up no results. So I thought, hmm, maybe if I get rid of the word social and just pop in media, I now have 31 results. So I've gone from 190 to 30. So I'm, I'm starting to really drill down into it. And the only way I will understand and get more content or more terms and phrases I need is having read the journal articles we would have seen earlier. And you'll jot these down as you go. Uh, the, the benefit of the word near only exists within Osley. <laughs> so the word near won't work on all the other platforms, uh, but have, have no fear. It is, it is such a handy tool to remember to use at any given time. Uh, so now that we've searched Osley, we're going to move into Westlaw. So Westlaw, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to search for my search Tory qualified. Privilege. Yeah. 
And I'm going to make sure I put it in my quotation marks because I got caught out in Ostley already by not putting it in quotation marks. So I don't want to end up with another 20,000 results. You learn, once you learn in one database, you kind of start implementing it on others. <laughs> it's also, I probably I want to make note too, with the quotation marks, do not put them across one word. Quotation marks over one word, for example, means nothing to the database. It's, it's not beneficial at all. So don't even worry about it. Only need quotation marks when you want words together. So say you're looking for bees knees, you would want that in quotation marks. You don't want to see bees and knees anywhere. Whereas when it's one word, you don't mind. It's like, okay, it's, it's only one word. As long as it's with my content, I'm happy. So this one result was all on statutory qualified privilege. Um, so I've got 215 cases, cool. And I've got 37 articles or journals here. Other commentary as well will come up here, which is nice. It's very different to what Ostley would have had. But I do want to be quite specific. I want it to be about defamation. So here I just pop in a forward slash and a number. Now the number 15, I'm telling Westlaw, look for statutory qualified privilege within 15 words of defamation. And this can be either side again, it's either side. But the number 15 indicates to Westlaw that's a sentence. If I wanted a paragraph, I would say 150. This is common knowledge. This is common across Westlaw, Lexis, and um, CCH. We'll hopefully get, get to after. But I wouldn't mind seeing sentence. I want to be quite, quite narrow in my researching. So hit enter on that result within 15. And we had 37 results. We've got now seven results for the secondary sources. And we've, we've pretty much cut half of the cases out too, which is awesome. Um, secondary sources, we select that. And here I can see, all right, it might be out of your plan. If it's out of your plan, like I said, don't stress, you would copy the result that it's come from. So this has come from the media and internet law practice and you'll put it in your library catalogue to search for it. It could be, it could come up on a different database. So don't stress. Um, just because it's out of your plan doesn't mean it's not accessible anywhere. As we scroll down, we can see, okay, well, there's the media and internet law practice again. I've got another Australian Law Journal article that didn't come up before. Pretty cool. Um, I've then got some other information from the Melbourne University Law Review. Um, and again, the Torts Law Review. I didn't see tort information before. How cool. All of a sudden, we're looking at it from a different topic, which is quite nice. This can put a bit of a spin on our research too. Could say, hey, that case that you thought was not important is actually quite spoken about here. Or it could just mean nothing at all. We could have a quick read of this. As you can see here, you've got a bit of an excerpt as to where it's come up and how it's been described. I mean, that's an old defamation act. <laughs> but then that shows the history of how statutory qualified privilege had tanked. That's a, it's something to think about, you know, that's, that's part of being curious of mind. It's actually, it, it's fun. It becomes fun then because you go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize back in 1974, this, this term was used. What did it look like? Wouldn't mind knowing. It then opens up, okay, well, statutory qualified privilege was brought in this way and today it looks different. It's the benefit of being a, a lawyer or even a student trying to be a lawyer. You know, you can go, oh, did you know that back in 1974, this term actually was effective this way? And, you know, 30, 40 years later, we've got it being interpreted as an online defamation. How cool are we of involving within the law? It, it's nice to make that kind of comparison too. And it shows how much curiosity you have. And you don't have to delve so deep into it to show that. You've read the journal articles. You've read, you saw some information that brought you to this content. And it adds a spin. Very useful. And it can actually probably help win a case. So not just even doing it for a research topic, 
you're doing this in the law firm and you found this information, nail on the head. How cool is that? You could actually be, have found information that wins the case at the end of the day because it had to look back over 20 years ago. And that's Information Act is 2005. So we might have to look further. Just being curious of mind is really important. That's what I'm trying to get at. All right. So these are our Westlaw results. This is how we narrowed it down. Um, it's pretty cool on Westlaw and Lexis, your narrowing down can actually be quite uh, useful with the filters on the left-hand side. So if we did wanna be really specific and say, well, my practice area is to do with media. I don't wanna see personal injury. I don't wanna see intellectual property. I actually wanna just see media results. So you can be quite tailored. And it helps too, if you don't know um, maybe the direction you want to go, these left-hand side, notifications can give you that little bit of a guidance that's really useful. So we'll open up Lexis Advance and I'll do the same search again. And because I want to search defamation, I'm going to do my within 15 words of one another. Telling Lexis. I want to search within a sentence. Generating this result, Westlaw had 107 cases. Lexis is spitting out 167 cases. Not bad. But it's got 16 secondary materials, a bit more than what Westlaw had. Worth tipping your hat to and having a look. I can see here, here's my dictionary meeting. We're doing a nice 360 here, guys. We, we started with our definition, our dictionary meaning, and it's come up here too, which is perfect. Um, we can just scroll past that information. And you can see here, we've got the Australian Bar Review. Again, another place we didn't look at before. This case, uh, sorry, this article came up uh, speaking about the Rebel Wilson case as well you'll start seeing there's things that are nicely meshing into one another. That tort law journal, we saw some tort information on Westlaw, not bad, definitely worth looking into again. Uh, so you can see even without realizing, yes, we are looking at defamation, but there's personal injury. So there's, another, there's another phrase you could use to search for the statutory qualified privilege because there's personal injury happening in some way. So there's a different way of interpreting personal injury. But it, it then just comes into this really nice spider web where everything is just interconnecting. We could have started definitely by doing a general search on statutory qualified privilege and defamation, but then we would have just been left with 167 cases, feeling really overwhelmed. Whereas when we started with our definition, we found the section of an act that really defined statutory qualified privilege. Thank goodness, because then it's given us the leading edge we needed. And all this search now is doing is just grounding a little bit more what we want to say. It's helping us sift through what's come up. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we can narrow it down by a legal topic. So I can say definitely media and communications is where I'm going with this content. And uh, I'm, I've narrowed, I haven't narrowed down anything at all, but still left me with 16 results. But I then might want to select defamation as a subtopic and still left me with 16 results. You can keep going until you get a little bit narrower down results. They will narrow down eventually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the RMIT page and hopefully CCH is on here. I think it is if I select commentary. There we go. CCH is often a database everyone forgets about. No one looks at it because they go, what is CCH? No one showed me CCH. Well, you guys are lucky because I'm showing you CCH and it is a database that is like the underdog of commentary. It is 
I can't, I can't express enough how cool CCH is. It just goes, mate, I found a paragraph. This is what it says. This is what it is. It is it's so cool. So, so cool. So I'm going to search for my statutory qualified privilege and defamation as well on here. And it looks dinosaur-y. Don't stress. It's not, it doesn't mean it's out of date. It's just, it, it just, it's like I said, it's the underdog. So it doesn't look as flash as Lexus and Westlaw. But I mean, that's, that's its edge. What can I say? Such a good call. All right. Now, because I want it to say, why is this upset? Oh, D. Because I want it to be within sentence, I do not do the forward slash 15. CCH has its own lingo. It's W forward slash S E N, the sentence. Now, if I wanted paragraph, it's W forward slash P A R. So just like, just like Ostley, it's got its own little query. All right, statutory qualified privilege within sentence of defamation. I have 24 results altogether. This is a good, this is a good start. It's picking up for me 18 cases and two pieces of commentary. How cool is that? So cool. I'm sorry, I love CCH. <laughs> so here's my first result in the Australian Torts Commentary. And this is talking about statutory qualified privilege in defamation. This is telling me that there have been amendments that have happened. So it's giving me good information uh, about what's happened recently in the coming in, in the years linking me out to where all this information is if I want to look through it, giving me my history, giving me the interest um, or apparent interest, giving me different looks into how is it and why is it that the torts commentary is coming up? I mean, we've been so stuck at the, the Defamation Act, right, from the beginning. But now having done that broader search after we've done our groundwork for the Defamation Act Section 30, I can see here, oh my gosh, there's some taught commentary. There's some, there's some extra topic I never thought of that could really meld into this. And across West Law, Lexus, and now CCH, this is probably something I should be looking into. This explanation within CCH, I promise you, will blow your socks off. It is awesome linking you out to other cases that may not have come up. CCH does that too, by the way. It's pretty thick. It's pretty wicked. <laughs> um, and you can see here the legislation it's talking to is Section 30. So it, it then all makes sense. Linking me out to extra content. This is, this is the database you want to be using. So don't forget about him. He's pretty cool. He may not be on the front list of the RMIT guide, but he's under commentary, you want to look at him. So important. Okay. I'm um, sorry, just to interrupt, um, just yes. if we could just wrap everything up because I know that we're very pressed for time and that you're very busy. Um, so could we just do like a big, just run through of everything, um, just in case any students have any questions? Yeah, of course, ask? yeah. I just had one more thing to show you because I know you all use it like there's, there's no tomorrow. You all use Google Scholar and know you do. Um, Google Scholar has this epic searchable thing <laughs> that not a lot of people know about. And I want you to go, I want you guys to have the edge because why not? All right, so say we're looking at statutory qualified privilege. We're just going to search for it on Google, Google Scholar like this. I have 147 results. I actually want to make sure that it's only giving me Australian content. We all know Google Scholar is quite universal. It's quite uh, you know, um, US specific too. So I want to make sure that Google Scholar is going to search over Australian content. By me putting in site colon dot au in front of my search term, you get nine results only being published from within Australia. Saves time. It is wicked. 
If I wanted to find out what it said in the UK, for example, I would just change my AU to .UK. This little trick here is going to help you get through all the content that's a bit of jargon on Google Scholar. It might be too US heavy. Um, I know we're searching for statutory qualified privilege, which is quite Australian heavy anyway, but to get through content on any other research topic you're doing, make sure you're using site colon dot and then um, au or dot uk. So tonight we've covered how to look for a definition on a particular phrase. Starting there is usually best bet. We found our section and particular um, act. We then looked for the act and made sure it was still current on the Victorian government website. We then did a legislative note up over Warsight, Westlaw, Lexus and Jade. We found the Rebel Wilson case. We've gone, yes, that matches with what I'm looking at. Then did a note up on that for through Foresight, Westlaw, Lexus and Jade. And then finally, we've gone, right, I want to see how statutory qualified privilege and defamation is affected overall after having all this content on CCH, Lexus, Westlaw and Fosley. Are there any questions? This is overwhelming, I know, but please, I want to answer as much questions as possible. Oh, thank you, Rachel. I'm glad you feel less anxious. <laughs> it's nice to have a sort of um, way to attack it. You know, sometimes you can go, oh, my God, all these databases, all these terms, what the hell? If you have a, a type of structure, it really helps. And not to say that the way I've done it tonight means this is how you've got to do it. If you want to start over these databases or your statutory qualified privilege with incentives of defamation, go for it. There's nothing stopping you from rejigging the process and then doing all your note up and then finding other content to then go narrower. It's completely up to you, but hopefully after tonight you have the tools to go, all right, I can, I can do it this way or I can do it that way. Thank you, Jeremy. I will say too, if anyone's doing employment law or corporations law, CCH is not a bomb. It is like the, the first platform you have to start in for, <laughs> for employment and corporations. Please just always start here on CCH. Thank you, Sunny. Well, Did anyone yeah. want me to clarify anything? Thanks, Julia. Oh yes, um, thanks Alyssa. I will uh, actually um, send that to Paul uh, just to go over the method of tonight. And uh, yeah, it'll just be the statutory qualified privilege and obviously regurgitate the words in your own way <laughs> after that. And sorry, this is probably a stupid question. How do I get it off Paul? Because the only way that I've been part of this is that um, one of our lecturers sent us a link and said, join this. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure if um, I'm sure Paul can get in touch with the um, library staff maybe and hand them this over or um, I'm sure there's a way it can be passed on to those who attended tonight. If there's an attendee list, it's probably going to be handed that way. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Um, I'll probably get something organised. So I'll just send out to everyone, so everyone's across all the resources that we've used today. Um, does anyone else have any more questions before we wrap up? I just, I, I'm going to say I wish you guys all the best. And <laughs> if, if there's anything you're stuck on, your library stuff are so awesome. Like there's, a, there, I, I believe there's a couple of them in there that have done law work before so reach out to them and chat to them and uh yeah obviously if you if you want to connect on linkedin just just find me or any platform happy to chat uh, is that everyone's questions answered any issues or concerns left 
Enough. If we're all good to go, um, I just want to say thank Anastasia for having us tonight. Um, we are all very thankful for your presentation. It was really informative and very beneficial to all students this semester and future semesters. Um, and it would be great if everyone could just turn on their cameras or just to sh um, have an emoji, just to show our, our appreciation to Anastasia for her hard work tonight. Um, so just a round of applause for you. Um, we all really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's all right. It's my pleasure. Um, and just before we, we conclude, um, on behalf of the RMIT LSS, thank you everyone for attending. Um, I'm sure that everyone has learned something. I sure did. So this time is really, really good for me. Thank you very much, Anastasia. Very welcome. All righty then, then that's about it. Thank you all so much. Um, and this will also be um, recorded. So yeah, as I already said, this is going to be recorded and it's going to be posted um, and we'll let you know how, where it's going to be posted as well, okay?